Today, I'm gonna to be giving you guys a full breakdown of my home studio. So if this is your first time here on this channel, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I must say, I am surprised that I've been in this studio for almost two years now, and I haven't done a tour of it. Um, one of the things that has stopped me from actually shooting a video like this is because I always say I just need to get this one more thing and I need to get another monitor or I need to get some more studio foam to hang up. Like there's just small little minute things that I want to do to this room that I haven't done yet. Um, part of it is just resources. Um, I just need to get the resources to be able to do those things. But um, I decided why not now let you guys in on the studio and show you where it's at now. And then later, once I get all the other updates that I want to do, why not do a studio tour part two? I'm mainly going to focus on the things that I feel like makes the studio special and the key things in the studio that I feel like are necessities. So let's start with the Nord. So the Nord Electro 6 is a keyboard that I got um, when I was working at Guitar Center. I got that keyboard in 2019. Um, at the time, if you don't know, if you work at Guitar Center, you get amazing discounts on gear. So I got this Nord keyboard for an amazing discounted price. I got it brand new. Um, it's one of my favorite keyboards in the studio. It's a keyboard that I feel like I can't live without in the studio. Like I need this keyboard here. Um, I probably hang on to this keyboard forever. On top of the Nord, I have a Stream Deck. What a Stream Deck is, is basically a camera switcher. So when I'm shooting videos like this, um, if I ever need to switch the um, camera to the computer screen, I can do that. Um, I can toggle between all these different things. So that's what the Stream Deck does. The computer that I'm using is a Apple M1. Um, I'm running two terabytes, 64 gigabytes of RAM. So this computer gives me enough power that I need to, you know, do videos, do music production, do all of those good things. I also have some USB hubs um, connected to the M1 so that I can connect all of my gear and all the things that I need into the M1. I know some of the older Apple MacBooks only gave you like one USB-C slot, but on this newer one, they actually give you three slots. So I'm super appreciative of that. Um, from there, I'm running my laptop. Um, I'm using a monitor, so I'm using a Acer monitor. So I'm going out of this monitor into the MacBook and I'm using an HDMI cable. So the main monitor that I'm looking at is straight ahead. It just so happens that my MacBook is to the right of me. So technically I kind of have two screens set up um, if you want to look at it like that. Moving over to my rack case. So my rack case is very interesting. As you see, I have a bunch of sound modules. Um, let's start with the Yamaha Motif. So we have a Yamaha Motif rack over here. That's one of my favorite racks to use. Um, then we have a Roland Integra 7. Um, that's a powerful sound module with like over 2,000 sounds. Then we have a Roland P330 sound module. Um, that's another good module as well. And the interfaces that I'm using, I'm using a Focusrite 18i20. Um, then I'm using a Focusrite OctoPre. So what the OctoPre does is basically gives me more inputs and more outs for all of the gear that I'm running. Um, as you see, I have like four different keyboards and a lot of stuff going into these interfaces. So I basically need all of these slots on my interface and I, I just about use all of them as well. Then above the interface, I have a power conditioner and that's where I'm getting my power from. So I'm plugging all of my keyboards and all of my sound modules into the power conditioner. Um, and that enables me to get the power that I need to supply my studio. Above that, on top of the desk, I have a Sterling headphone amp. And basically the headphone amp is just another way to have more input so I can hear. So if I have a singer in here singing, the singer can plug into the headphone amp. Um, if I need to run a output into my iPhone, I have another option to um, run out of my headphone amp as well so just having options is good i love having options when i'm working in my studio now over here is my content creation space um, this is kind of where i shoot content from i have my irig i have my roadcaster pro um, at first i had the roadcaster pro and my irig like right in front of me but i decided to move it to the left of me so that i can have a midi board right here and i can play and create without having to reach back over here um, so the Rodecaster Pro is basically another interface. I use that when I'm podcasting. And then I also use that when I'm um, shooting videos like this as well. I'll go deeper into the setup of um, the Rodecaster Pro in another video. But basically what I'm doing is I'm running out of my Focusrite 18i20 into the Rodecaster Pro. 
um and then that's how i get audio on videos like this and that's how it's so clear and the rodecaster pro is plugged up into my macbook as well but the rodecaster pro 2 i would highly recommend if you're trying to do youtube and you're using different softwares and stuff like that for content creation highly recommend it um i'll have to do another video on it later at another point but again i highly recommend the rodecaster pro 2. then of course we got the iRig extreme i use that when i make instagram videos and to record the audio from the rodecaster or from the focus right 18 i 20. that's how i'm capturing audio and making it so clear over here we have the cord chronos as you know the cord chronos is a new board that i just got not too long ago it's the newest addition to the studio um, the Cord Kronos 88 key, great keyboard made by Cord. Um, I love it, loving it so far. I'm gonna do another review on that coming up soon. Above that, we have the Roland Phantom X6, an amazing keyboard. Um, I highly recommend a Phantom X6, great keyboard for aux and stuff like that. And as you can see, we have lights around the studio. Um, that's another thing I wanna get some more of. I need to get some more lights. I need to get two more lights in these corners. Then I want to get the lights hung like there's so much more things I want to do in the studio. But these two lights that I have right now is off of Amazon. So I'm going to leave that link below. You can get these lights off Amazon. Then, as you can see on the walls, I have foam up. Um, I have like these sound panels up and then in the ceiling, I have sound panels up as well. So this whole entire room sounds really dry and damp. Um, having these things on the walls and the thing in the ceiling really helps absorb some of the sound it's often a misconception that studio foam is on the wall to um, block out sound completely and that's just not true the studio foam is there to kind of absorb the sound and stop you know the sound from bouncing everywhere and having a bunch of reflections so the studio foam works out really really good i don't know if you can tell or not but if i clap like it's pretty dry in the room and it sounds really um, nice just in general. And I really appreciate the way that uh, the studio foam is able to absorb the sound. The desk that I'm using is made by a company um, called RAB, I believe. Um, it's a company on Sweetwater. So I got the desk for maybe $450 or so. I got it when I first moved in. Um, great desk. It's a little flimsy, a little bit like it's, it's heavy duty, so to speak, but um, part of it like leans and tips over like if I push on it a little bit too much like it starts to rock back and it doesn't take much pressure for it to actually rock back. So at some point I want to upgrade this desk and get something a little bit more sturdier and more nicer. Um, again, this desk was only $450 or so. So in the grand scheme of things, this is actually like an entry level um, studio desk. So I want to get something a little bit more professional. And last but not least, I'm using some JBL MK2 um, speakers. I believe that's what they call. Um, they're like $150 per speaker. So the whole package is like $300. These are entry level speakers as well, but they get the job done. Um, I want to upgrade these speakers at a certain point as well too. Um, it'll be really, really nice if a company sees this video and they want to donate me some speakers for me to do a review. That would be nice. I'm kind of shooting my shot there, but you never would know what may happen. Um, but yeah, that's my whole entire home studio. Me and my wife, we've been in this house now for like maybe a year and a half now, going on two years. And I'm so thankful and so blessed to be able to have a space where I can create content and create music in this room in my own house that I pay the mortgage on. Like it's such a blessing and I'm so thankful for that. So again, I say use what you have. Um, as long as you get creative with your room and if you have a vision you can make it happen and make it work for you thank you guys so much for watching this video comment down below what you think of this studio tour and let me know what you think all right we out